Feel more baby rain. Well, I feel like, just like my impression by what's going on right now, it's like I feel like it's a very like pitting people against each other. And I, yeah, system, you just go against the system. That's how you do it. But you go against. I mean, like it's the, been the government us that, that currently is here. That. Let me. I don't stand for. How is it not us versus them? We get fucking shot. They don't go to jail. Bam. Us them. No, we can't because this the framework that you're talking about was started with me being considered property. Exactly. Not even a human being. She had roots. Its roots are, are evil. That's why we it used to be life, it. liberty, and the pursuit we, of property we, as in to make your slaves rape we, each we other so you can have it. We haven't, we haven't redone it. We I haven't wanted to shut down it. a long time ago, but my stream won't let me. They said the whole world I, I is watching, like, Bella. I, I, I hear what you're trying to say. It's like that everything that's being said is kind of... Let me get back in here, Nick, please. Sorry. Stalemated at this, at this point. You know, that's because we're meeting, we're, we're yeah. telling yeah. one right side here. the issues, exactly. and one side is, is saying, but... I don't think that's the way we should do it, but I'm yeah. telling you that this is what the <laughs> problem is, yeah. and you don't want to. The goal, the, do goal it. the goal of this, the goal of this conversation from here is, is, is to, is to change, to change hearts, to change minds, and to change the socialization as to why, why these things are an issue. And the way that happens is that these young men that are being killed are being, it, it becomes personal. And the way, the way that people that otherwise might not be passionate about an issue, as passionate about an issue like this. Is, is when you realize that I'm like, Mike really Brown is, 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 is your classmate. <laughs> Mike Brown is the guy that lives down the hall street that you know and you love. You know he's a great guy. Like these, these that there's there's just as much risk as as Mike Brown, as Brian Derrick Mike. There, there's just as much risk because the way they look, their their being is 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 a threat. <laughs> you it's, just it's as much survival. risk. And that and that's that they're trying to make trying to make these issues as personal as possible because that. That's that's what leads to the change that we need. That's that's what that's why we're here to, because because it's it's all it's all it's all a tactic in the movement. Like that that next step is coming. Like we're here because the, 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 the students are here. They're, they're here because SLU students have the means, they have the know-how, they have the education to 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 to, to, to progress this movement just like we want to do because they're. What do you want to? I don't, I'm not sure like what the next step that you're describing. Would you mind? Uh, destroy uh, the system. Destroy. But I'm saying you can't. Like yeah, I mean, you, like, you can't say, "Hey, I know you're homeless, and I want to help you. Tell me what you need. I'm gonna get it for you. I, I want to make your situation better. Tell me what you need. Yo, it's it's about to be winter, and I need a jacket. No, I think you should wear this windbreaker that I got right here. But I'm." My issue is winter's coming, and I need to protect myself, and I need this jacket. But you want to? Maybe that was a bad analogy. But if sense. if you if you want to help, you can't dictate what the help looks like, because I'm telling you what the issue is, and I know what the problem is because I'm living it. My, I, you don't know my reality. But you. Don't you know mine but you well, what we do know is that is you won't get criminalized by the police because of color of your skin. We don't even need what? to know you to know that. What would you say? I said in America we do that. We know what the reality of a white person looks like because it's the general, like, it's what everyone's accepted. As right. Reality. That's a very, like, generalized statement. You can't categorize all white women so into one category. There are people of various socioeconomic, like, positions. You can't do that. And you're saying you can't categorize. If you're saying yeah, that you're going to go know that. You walk on the street. And a police doesn't know how much money your parents make, how much money you have in your wallet. That's they not do know. I know that's not my fault. And, and that, that is white privilege right there, that. yeah. Because the skin of, like, the color of your skin, you will not be judged. You are not in danger as other people are. Independently from, like, how much money you have. Because a rich black man would have the same problem of being at risk as a poor black man because they are both black. Even but Obama said, I'd have been uh, like stopping frisk. To try to move forward with this, I want to have the same respect. I want it to be a mutual relationship, and I realize that the system is like bringing up more. But well, the first step is to realize that our reality is fucked up, and you don't live that. Like you can walk down the street and not be criminalized, and you can run a stop sign and not have five police cars um on the back of you with their hands on their guns if it's just you and your baby. Like, and you are afforded that luxury because of this color of your skin, regardless of your class issues. I'm definitely not taking from that. I'm not saying that all white people is rich. But what I'm saying is there are certain things that are you are afforded because of the color of your skin and it's not even questioned. 
It's just that that's just how it is. And so our reality every day, my reality as a mother every day is hoping that my son can make it back in the house. And it's not because of the dude standing on the street. And it's not because, you know, the black on black crime that we throw out there is because that he might not be guilty of shit. But just walking down the street, he will be stopped and messed with by people who we give the authority to shoot and kill on sight in the middle of the street where we're denied justice. And they are the judge, jury and executioner. So it's not that this is a white issue or white versus black. I'm definitely not trying to attack white people and I know I come off passionate and strong and blunt as a motherfucker and I'm a bitch sometimes so that's just what it is but what I'm saying is like I'm trying to highlight the issues in my experience as a black woman in America but my by me highlighting those issues I'm talking about white supremacy I'm talking about you know what I'm saying white privilege and so it's like these are the things that we are subjected to because the, your benefits come from our lack of a benefit so you like everything that you are offered that's extra is because it was taken from us so it's not equal so that's why we well, that's what we're saying. I'm not judging you. I don't know your life. You know what I mean? Now, you might go home and your your boyfriend black and you got a black baby and all these things. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not judging that because I don't know you. But all I'm asking is that when y'all walk down the street, don't judge me. Don't judge my baby because he liked to wear his pants hanging off his ass. I got a problem with that shit, too. I can't make him stop. You know what I mean? Like, that's all I'm saying is don't judge us because we are equally human. We bleed red. We If we don't eat and drink water, we fucking die, too. You know what I'm saying? But when we try to go find jobs, it's hella harder for us. I, I understand affirmative action, but that shit is not that don't work. You know what I'm saying? When we go get jobs, we kept on the lower ranks typically. It don't matter how educated we are. You know what I'm saying? We are just as bogged down by student loans and this, that, and the other. I got a full scholarship to go to law school. I can't even finish my last two semesters to transfer because of financial aid and shit. And these are systemic issues that happen in the in the um, neighborhoods of color. So when the police come up to me, they don't realize that they're de dealing with an educated woman who was actually a registered Republican two years ago and on her way to law school and debating um, policy and government issues. Uh, issues every single day every single week competitively like they don't know that they dealing with that all they see here is another little nigga bitch and her picking any and they're fucking criminals and now she didn't coast through a stop sign and her stick and and her stick shift a little bit and now we got four fucking cars on her and she's scared that she not gonna make it home tonight and we'll put her in jail and hold her fucking baby until maybe somebody can come get her i got a lot of white friends i can't count how many none of them have that issue and that's why i'm like these are the things that we're talking about. We're not trying to make you feel uncomfortable like you white, you the fucking problem. No, you're white, you have these, like this situation. We just need you to understand it a little bit and try to educate those who might not be as open to come out and talk to us, who might not be as open as hearing it from us. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like if you look at Augusta Boyle's theory, you know, entertainment can be a, 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 a form of war. I mean, you know what I mean? Like a form of attack to these barriers. So instead of using entertainment, we're trying to use community and we're trying to use communication. We're trying to use the community of SLU to meet the outside community of St. Louis that lives and, and, and is subjected to these issues every day while you're insulated in this bubble of privilege. You know what I mean? And you don't you might not necessarily understand our issues. You definitely don't live them, but you might not necessarily understand them. So the first way that we begin to affect change, you know what I mean? And I know that like a lot of us, I like instant gratification. Like I'm on shit now from California. We don't fuck around. You know what I mean? Like, but it, like we not gonna be able to topple this tomorrow. We're not gonna be able to do this. By the time my baby is my my baby is 10 years old, I'm just hoping that he can like have some friends and they can go to drive somewhere and get pulled over by the police and the police don't pull the white driver out. Where Nick? Because this should happen to us on the way here. Like, don't pull the white driver out and go, how you know that girl in the back? Like, motherfucker, we all got California IDs. Like, can we not be friends? I didn't kidnap them. Like, what you want me to say? I'm their friendly neighborhood drug dealer, Tyrone. Now, do I fit better into your category of whatever because of my skin color? Like, you know what I mean? Just trying to lighten it a little bit, but like this shit is serious. You know what I mean? And it is an epidemic. And we just want y'all to understand that. Like, we not out here criminalizing y'all because we don't want y'all to criminalize us. We just need y'all to say, look, this shit is fucked up. And even if you don't agree with the Mike Brown shit and all that, that's fine. That is totally fine. But if you are an American and you believe in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, then you should be like, they got the right to at least say what they're going to say. I don't even fucking like these motherfuckers, but damn, like, don't shoot them and shit. 
You know what I mean? Like tear gas for real. I pay more taxes than them probably because I'm in a higher tax bracket, which means I'm paying for that shit. Let them say what they're going to say. And if you stop fucking with them, they go in the house. I can go to sleep and go do my midterm shit. Like, you know what I mean? See, that type of thing. Like, if y'all come out and protest about wanting justice for a black police officer shooting a white kid and it's majority white protesters, just like the Bundy situation, y'all not going to meet the same type of oppression that we meet trying to access the same rights. And so that's, you know what I mean? And this is in a state where y'all sold slaves on the courthouse steps like shit we remember that our parents remember not being able to sit our grandparents remember not being able to sit on the bus like that shit we was raised up with and it was oppressive to us as children but y'all don't come up with that you know what i mean it wasn't you could never sit on the back of the bus and you know what i mean in this type of shit so those are the things that we're saying so it does make you uncomfortable i'm sure you know what i'm saying but that's how we know that we doing shit right that's why it's like we try to be patient and have the conversations and sometimes we get passionate and and upset and frustrated and need to take a step back because honestly, like, this shit shouldn't have fell on us. You know, we didn't ask for it, but it, it, it's, it's what we gotta do because we wanna make sure our kids have a better life. Just like y'all wanna make sure y'all kids got a better life. Well, what parent don't make, wanna make sure of that? You know what I mean? Like, regardless of color. So like, I'm sorry, like, while we talking about this and you asking like, what we gonna do? This is what we doing. This is the only way that it's gonna really be effective. Cause otherwise, if we don't solidly build these networks, if we don't really solidly start to communicate and open up, like we're never ever going to be effect, uh, able to effectively combat other things like capitalism, like ageism, like whatever sexism that continue to oppress us. Read Phillips and Brighter. Like I'm not fucking lying. Like read this type of shit. Like they talk about it all the time. You know what I mean? It's it's in the books that you guys have available in your libraries that a lot of us aren't even able to access if we don't have like, you know, whatever your system is that y'all use to catalog your shit is saying. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't even have that. So like that's just where. Now I want to say something on that statement she just said. She made a, she made a good statement. She's talking about she's talking about two cultures, bro. Two cultures. White culture, black culture. Now we have in the city a bunch of white police officers. Well, let's just do Ferguson. We got a bunch of police that are white in Ferguson that are that are patrolling the Ferguson neighborhood that are black they don't know our culture now for example i'm a black officer i see a kid and he cursing it acting all radical well i know how he act because that's like a little nephew to me a little cousin to me or a little brother to me that's from my culture we don't understand each other culture for real because i don't understand a white culture i don't understand how you are like, I don't know how you accept. I don't understand a white culture. I understand my culture. And that's what they don't teach us in school. They don't teach us about different cultures, uh, how a person acts. I don't understand if my little cousin walking down the street with his shirt off, cursing. Boom, boom, boom. That look. Let little day they cool off. <laughs> just let him cool off. He'll be good. He just need to calm down. He'll be back just talking like ain't nothing happened. I understand my culture. I don't understand y'all culture. Do you think that that culture is okay, though? Yeah. Do you think if my culture is I, okay? I'm saying, okay, for instance, <laughs> let's, let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it. Rephrase it. I, I, if, if I, I did not mean it offensively, with so music, if I misphrased, yes. Did you bring music? Okay. Where music, let me, let me explain something with music. Let me explain something with music. Like I, I, I explained earlier, I just got out the penitentiary. I was Justin saying, Bieber or Bonterra, Bonterra, when they Missouri. do it, it's cool. Hey, yeah. everybody needs to listen to this. They need to understand this. I was in Bonterra, Missouri. The highway was called KKK. Do you you know that? I I you know? I've, 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 I've so never been the there. highway was called KKK, bro. Then it got changed to Bonterra, Missouri. I mean Bonterra. But they was trying to fight because they wanted to keep it KKK. Now the people in Bonterra, Missouri Penitentiary, ERDCC, was you had big dogs of the Ku Klux Klan there. How I know? Cause she is, you know. Because you got people that's locked up from the Klan. Like you got people that's Masons still locked up. You got people anywhere you still can get locked up. So I knew this. Man, I got treated so bad by what I what I experienced. I wasn't, I ain't racist. 
I ain't know nothing about race. That's like when little dude told I told him, man, tell me some jokes about blacks. And he told me a bunch of them. And you know what he told me? Tell me some jokes about white. I couldn't I tell don't him know none. that. Because <laughs> I wasn't raised like that. Hold on. I made a song because of the racism I seen. We going back to music. Yes. And you you people talk about stuff they experience and they express it through music. This is the song I made. Don't get official back because I have white people that are part of my family. That my my uncle then brought in. They number me 1185628 locked in a cell upstate lightning signs case signs people hate my kind the last people to release my kind 60 days till i walk away they gonna do everything in their power to try to have me stay my mama told me be cool son you gotta pray i throw my hands up to the sky they say it's gang related stay in the shower too long they say it's jack lady fuck a pig body bag him if you ask me never been the type to hate until they hated me hmm. my pops told me be cool he ain't seen the way they treated me shorten up this two bus gonna poke him where it can't scream Judge gave him two lies. He only 16. Mama crying in the courtroom. It was a sad scene. He blinking his eye like it was a bad dream. Ain't nobody helped him like nobody helped me. So when I got this money, I spent it all on me. See, Boosie got that fuck you hater chain. I got that fuck a pee. Locked in jail. I can't win in this bitch. So when I get out, I'ma fuck me a white bitch. Slap her and whip her and talk her with my dick. YouTube and Facebook and Twitter to the white kids screaming, fuck them all. Fuck. Fuck them all, kill them off like Hitler did. Run around my city like a Muslim kid. You hear me? That's a song I made from, hold on. That's a song I made from being oppressed in the penitentiary when I wasn't doing anything. I came in there saying, yes, sir, no, sir, because I was trying to make it home to my family, bro. And I'm still getting targeted. I was still getting targeted as a, I'm only 24, cuz. And that's I'm why not getting looked at as, as a kid no more. That's a song I made because I ain't know where that song came from, but it came from uh, the shit I experienced, bro. So, how how is the how do you not see a problem with saying something like slapping a white bitch and choking her and is you, can I can I touch he, on that? Well, I mean, he he was saying from like his, his experience that he made up while he was going through that. Can I can yes, I touch did, on that? Did, I think. I think I understand what you're saying, like just from a broader perspective of music in general, with like the lyrics and how they yeah, represent it, that type it of thing. Glorifies drugs, sex, violence. Um. What rock the? I'm not saying that. I, I'm saying. I mean, yeah, it was a sex, drugs, and rock and roll, right? Yeah. I mean, so there's not the same stigma on that that there is on black music. However, traditionally, Africans had had um, had to use music as a way to express themselves. And so, when you're talking about a people that have had 400 plus years of oppression, like specifically his lyrics, I've never heard this song before. As a matter of fact, I never met this brother before tonight. But like when he said that, immediately what I thought of was like scenes from Roots or some shit like that. You know what I mean? Like when we talked about the fact that it was no longer legal to sell and trade slaves and so they made us start raping one another so that they could reproduce you know what I mean and so also you know in my family uh, some people in my family I can't speak for everybody but I have heard them say like I can't ever really date a white man and I've tried because I feel like I'm being sexualized and tokenized so as black women like even if you look at that cake you know that one cake they always make it's a really tar black cake and the red lips and shit and it was it was about that woman that black lady i don't know if you know i can't what's her name no no it's not angela i can't think of her name and if you guys in the stream can think of it help me out but um you know she was one of the original black women who came over as a slave and they used to make her stand there naked and point out her ass how big it was and her breath and things like that and they made a cake to emulate that so as african-american women like we fight because of the, the the unjust killings and criminalization of our men but then there's also the undertone of like the fact that the women are constantly raped and being sexualized and then we have the the black feminist versus the regular general feminist argument you know what i mean so his lyrics might he might not even 
And like he said, I don't even know where those leaks came from, but it's a representation of how black women have continuously been continually being seen in this country and the history of how they've also been treated. And so like a lot of times in our music, because it's oftentimes the only way that it would be accepted is if we put it to a beat and wear a fucking gold chain with spinners, diamonds on the shit or whatever, you know what I mean? Then all of a sudden it's a cool thing to listen to. And honestly, like there are a lot of conscious rappers. There's Dead Prez, there's their Mortal Technique, there's Low Key. They don't get the same distribu distribution uh, deals. They don't get the same type of money because honestly it's dangerous to this establishment when we're talking about white supremacy, when we're talking about white privilege and dismantling that as a form of oppression in this capitalistic system. Like when we, when we're talking about that, it's, it's a, what is it, like a conflict of interest. You know what I mean? You don't want to invest into making sure that we can empower those in a lower socioeconomic condition, especially those who've been subjected to extreme racism throughout the history of this country by putting out positive music. We want them to be Jay-Z and not give a fuck and I'm eat the cake and eat the, I mean, eat the cake and the and I'm at your cake, catch a case and slob on my knob, bitch, and all that shit because they want that to be the norm for the next generation so that we don't come up thinking that, you know, if you're not angry, you're not paying attention and listen to lyrics like that from Tom York. You know what I mean? Like, they don't want that. So, you know, when you address the music, it's like the only things that they want us to be become popular. Don't under, don't mistake it. Slavery gave us I, um, iPads and Nikes. You know what I'm saying? And spinner wheels and candy coated paint. That's what slavery did for us. It didn't teach us to go out and start our own businesses and educate ourselves and empower our community. It didn't teach us that. So when we look at the music that you hear played on whatever your local radio stations are or whoever's doing the concert and all the news talking about how they a real nigga and get shot and this, that, and the other, is damaging to the people who are educated and out here because when you see that in the in our entertainment industries and when you see it on CNN and when you see it on MSNBC these are the same entities that 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 invest into that you know what I mean when you ride by the Mike Brown protest you think of that you know what I'm saying? That's another reason they control the narrative. They talk about shootings and I had shit to do with the protests. They talk about Ebola first. Then they talk about, you know, uh, violent protesters. And they talk about all oh, the robberies that happen. So you got people for the shit from Africa about to kill you. And these niggas is crazy. And them other niggas is crazy. And black is be scared. Black, black, scared, plague. Well, that, gonna that, kill brings you. Up, that brings up the next thing I was, I was going to ask. So I know that you do not want to be judged on stereotypes. Just as, as I don't want to be judged on the series. Yeah, like when I see a white man by my baby's school, I don't want to think that you're going to rape him. Exactly. Or just some weird I, shit. I, I you know what not, I mean? Like, I would hope not. And I would, I would, I wouldn't, I would hope that I wouldn't do the same to, to, to you. Um, but don't you think that possibly lyrics like that from someone that's not a part of that culture can look like it's perpetuating a stereotype? But, I mean. But she was just explaining that the, like, go ahead. You got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, but okay. Um, I can see what you're Marilyn saying, Manson and for sure, that is, that, that is an issue, especially like as a woman, I understand how that's an issue, but you cannot deny the fact that a big chunk of the money these people are getting are from the white people who listen to it. Okay. Evil, yeah. I, I'm like, not denying like, that. So, I don't think it's, it's, it's not just like a perpetuation <laughs> of a stereotype from the back from the black people, but it's part of like how they express themselves. Do I think there's a, like there's a flaw in it, especially for women? Definitely. But I think there's there's a lot of white Come on, man. They putting on a show. They the same ones that used to come on and, yes, sir, master, I'm going here, push this over here, tell these niggas what you want me to tell them. Yes, I am, because I'm going to go ahead. Right, like, I'm going to be the role model. Right, no, I'm going to be the role model for these very impressionable children, because that's what they are. Let's not get it twisted. Just because they black, they still children. I'm going to be the role model for these very impressionable children. And um, we standing under a light, so I'll but do that. Also, Sorry about that. You know what I mean? If all the information you're getting about black people is from rap and like the media, then you need to you need to like, way more research. Need to be to That's how you really understand like where people are coming from and what they're up. about. Like Rick you know, Ross talk about gang shit, and he is a correctional officer. His big fat black ass is a correctional officer, <laughs> and he raps that same shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, just because, and, and then not only that, that, but once again, let's talk about entertainment and let's talk about free speech. Like, people say shit all the time. I don't necessarily agree with them, but assimilation is a powerful fucking tool. And if you, and, and where are we talking about black people never get rich and we don't own mansions and we can't buy a Mercedes and we can't have Jaguars and Bentleys and shit. Well, they can't. And you know why? Because they tell us that we need to be little niggas and drug dealers on the street and they perpetuate that image very successfully. And so, you know, just because it is music that we might listen to sometimes, like, it's the music 
like 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 they use the beats and the drums of our people like that's how that comes out y'all go to your elementary school dances and they like okay that's traditional african dance like don't put a ruler between me and sexualize my culture you know what i mean really the reason why it's evil is because we haven't been educated to understand that it is traditional and it is hyper sexualized here so you know like just because it happens doesn't mean that every single black person is okay with that shit either you know what i mean but also they have a right you know what i mean like the music of the 70s does not look the same as the music of right. today it, you though. know what i'm saying <laughs> and just, right but like we need a revolution because a lot of these laws that are set in place a lot of like these stigmas that have been set in place are not even like relevant to this generation at all you know what i mean so we have to like i said man sometimes you got to just look and be like look jay-z don't represent me i don't even buy his albums i don't listen to his shit matter of fact i only listen to conscious music as much as possible because i don't need to poison myself with that anymore i don't watch mainstream media because i don't like being lied to and i damn sure don't like paying 150 dollars a month to be lied to my water bill is 200 dollars. like i i just will take that you know what i mean like these are issues and we are constantly plagued by media because they fucking lie to us but y'all but how many black friends do you have do you know you know what i'm saying like that kind of shit like how do you know if that's all you have and it's not blaming you it's how this society's been step you know has been has been running forever so that fact that you out here and having this conversation is amazing because we've already breached one of those barriers you know what i mean like we've already decided to, to start I'm gonna, doing i'm it. gonna jump in on one thing really quick okay so you've you've hit two issues here right now so you hit the whole like you know white people don't understand this culture thing and then you just brought up the other issue of like you know like other people like jay-z like you just said that are perpetuating this stereotype right have you guys tried to like you know reach out to them oh yeah others oh. and Oh yeah, that as well, and like you know, but hit, hit both fronts of that. I'm gonna tell you, here's the thing. The only problem with that is when you're dealing with people that, and if you did try to talk to the Jay Zs, then that would be when the people that own the distribution of their albums would come out that just so happen to be white. white. <laughs> no, let's you know not saying? get it twisted. Like for real, some there is some white Jewish no, dude, no bullshit, that right. owns this owns this <laughs> the distribution <laughs> rights to all these rappers. And they're getting paid and they continue to want the money so it's like you tell jay-z don't do this i don't want you to do this that's cutting the money that's coming into another person's pocket so they're gonna say hold on hold on no that's not what i want you to do i want you to continue to talk about what you were talking about because you was bringing me money so how can you attack an artist or go at an artist when the people that's paying them are the ones that want to continuously see the cycle well i mean like you I feel like you should hit the issue the same way on both fronts, right? Like it's about education, it's about understanding what's going on. So like, you know, you you can't you can't sit here and say, uh, you know, they're not gonna do that because they're getting paid and things like that. Like, you know, I'm not saying all of yeah, them. Yeah, I, I know, I know, I, I understand. But like, you can't like, you know, as as you know, general generalizing everybody in that sense, you shouldn't say, you know, you know, they're 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 never going to stop doing that you know they're only going to keep going because money is the only reason they're doing it for you know like you said like somebody's paying them in behind the uh behind the curtains or something let me, like that let me, let me. so like you know if you kind you know it's a uh, it's like what you're doing here you know you, you're making a stand if you make a stand in that essence you know i feel like you can have an let impact me. too on both fronts Please let me hit this. so it's as simple as this this is a capitalistic society and things only survive based on telling us that that's what we want right so we go buy that so the only way we can effectively really change whatever Jay-Z or whoever the Jay-Z of the time is going to be, like the only way we can really combat that is like what we're doing right here. And when we go home and we like expose our nephews and our sons and stuff to other things, because until we make that the demand here, they're not going to supply it. You see what I'm saying? It's a supply and demand thing right now. Yeah. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're right. Because it's the difference between once you educate Right. They do stupid stuff, and you just be like, "What? What are you thinking? Why? Are you, why are you letting your daughter go out here with, you know, this little short skirt on or these little booty shorts on? You know, she don't get. They don't know no better. They feel like, oh, that's that's nothing wrong with that. You know. So it's all about your morals and your beliefs. Like, what do you believe in? Because if you don't have no kind of morality, morality in you to do anything, you might think it's okay and acceptable to sell drugs, but you know, you might think it's acceptable. I mean, honestly, not even just acceptable, but honestly, like that's the only reality where we can see making money. Sometimes it's like, okay, I understand you said go to school, but shit, the light bell do right now. Right. And uh, you know, my situation, I live on my own, whatever, and I don't even have money right now. But you know what? 
I still keep it in the back of my mind, like, you know what, I get my degree. And some people don't think they can do it, so they don't go out here. It's because it's not a reality. Like, look at the high school graduation rates in black right, communities, straight up. I from a rough school. I went to Normandy, and it wasn't easy. But you know what, I still made it. And I put, it, the only reason why I made it is because I had a grandma that put her foot in my ass right. and forced me to go to school. No, and I, she didn't play that. She didn't play that, none of that. You ain't going to be with no little boy. You ain't going to be out here talking about you. Crazy. You ain't gonna be out here, you know, smoking weed, drinking. She didn't play that. She made me go to church every Sunday. She made me get my ass up every day. And I didn't want to go to school some days, but she was like, you're gonna get the hell out of my house. Did you, you know, know when I, you got I, like I, one I, mom and like three school. kids and she's single because the mother, dad been locked up or whatever, it's hard to do that. Here. And she didn't play that like, you know, I ended up moving in with my grandmother in high school. My, my mother didn't play that type of stuff. When you a child, you're gonna be a child. You're not gonna be talking about, oh, I, I'm gonna uh, go buy this. I'm gonna go put on some lip gloss. I'm gonna go you know, go get me a 13, well, not a 13, that ain't long. Get you a 30-inch weave down your ass. You weren't going to do none of that. You're going to put those pigtails <laughs> in your head, and you're going to sit your ass down. I'm sorry. You're going to sit your ass down. You're going to do your homework, and you're going to do what I tell you to do because I'm your mother, and that's that. And that's just how I was raised, but everybody not raised like that. So that's why you get all these, you know, different people letting their kids do all this crazy stuff. So my mother, you know, she has, uh, she got her education. She did, you know, more in life before she had kids, you know. If you're just having kids out here at a young age, you pretty much don't have any foundation for your children. That's what you need to have a foundation before you have your kids. And that's how I feel. I think she brings up one of, I think, the biggest points of one of the biggest things that's affecting our culture is that we don't perpetuate trying to have a family unit. And then a family that's unit, you need a mother and a father, you don't here. need to just and have all these single families out here yeah. like women I know I know some women right now that'll be like you know what I don't need no man in my life I can raise my, my three kids or myself and that's not the right hell thing. nah it's hard to what? have a family you know, you know, <laughs> three kids by myself these other things you working working you work, you work, you work, you work, you work, hours that. a week you trying to bring home all the money. Well, exactly. Kids. If you Nobody. working 40, 50 so hours a week and y'all, exactly. Exactly. These are the people that's teaching your kids because that's what they're going to look up to. They're not going to look up to you because you're not in a household to raise them. But you know what? what? And that's like, act like the two parent black household don't exist. But like it I said, exist. we get kept on the lower to, ranks. You got, you got two full time working parents. Who is raising our kids? You know what right. I mean? So, it's, it's, it's like, yeah. You got you to be willing to raise your kids the right way. You cannot be out here talking about. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna leave them here with this babysitter, that babysitter, because you don't know what these babysitters are capable of. They could be molesting True. your kids. They could be teaching your kids all yeah. kinds of crazy stuff. They can be teaching your kids it's okay to fight. It's okay to shoot people. They, you know, you don't know what's going on. So you really have to be at home with your kids and really put them on the right track at like at a young age. So when they get old enough, they know better. But we rugged individualists. Let's just face it. The system killed the family unit. Like it's not even whatever. Don't hear about. What? See, I was just gonna say that like that's what needs to change. That's I see that that is the far bigger because it, it's once this is a small thing and it begins to build. You have more people that stay in schools. You have more people that aren't out. It, 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 a woman cannot it, teach a boy how to be a man. I think it makes a difference though, bro. Like, and she told me that she said she can't stand him, but she know what he one thing he did that was pay the bills, and he made sure he came home at a decent hour. You know, see, I think it, I mean, even it, it make a difference some, too, some though, like the school systems, because so oh, like together, you know? the systems that we that the schools that we it's killing me, y'all, but y'all like, won't let me shut like, down. I, okay, so. I went to Cardinal Ritter. <laughs> I went to Cardinal Ritter when it was on Thackley and Emerson, which probably you all don't know where that is. No. Okay, now that's where Cardinal Ritter was before. Now, I, I went there the last year it was there, and I went to Cardinal Ritter when it moved down the street from this location, and it's a completely different eyesight. Like if if you if you would have went to the Cardinal Ritter, you probably would walk down to Cardinal Ritter now, but you probably wouldn't have walked to it when it was where it was. But it was the same name of the school and it was the same type of people like it was predominantly black catholic school you know what i mean and black catholic school. right real that's stop a, right there yeah but i ain't gonna but it's like <laughs> you look at it like okay most of the people that were going there they they would go there just because they, they wanted some type of good education and if they were able to even have a school where they could pay uh the private uh the private school fees you know to go from when it was in the hood, it wasn't as costly as it was when it moved right here. So the people that couldn't, uh, that could barely afford to go there when it was in the hood, when it moved down the street from here, 
they weren't able to pay for it still. You know what I mean? So it's like because of the change of venue, because it looks better, you have to pay more. And it, it cuts the it, should the chat should the children have to take that into effect and, and, say, and feel like that's the reason why they won't be able to get anything because the the school systems are built for them to fail. I just want to say, like, especially like, because I have a lot of family in Detroit, and if you look at Detroit, their school system is awful. And like, it's not a result of the families or the product of particularly black families. It's not their fault. They're being put in a system where they're destined to fail. Like, no one is pushing them. And especially today, media and entertainment, especially, truth is oppressed. Like, if the truth comes out, like, you like people to take it to people who like Jay Z or who are like, if you look at Lupe, he wanted to leave yes, the metal. Lupe Why do you want to leave because he couldn't make the albums exactly. he wanted to make. Why couldn't he do it? Because it wasn't going to make the money. It right. was going to make him fans. It was going to help people be empowered, Lift, right? Become. And you can't be lifted into their side. That's what they don't All want. All of this and will like, be saved, I'm John. also Islamic. And so we, as Islamics, especially like my brothers, like Islamic brothers, we also get profiled like how black get profiled. Exactly. Like, oh, you're black, you're a gangbanger. You're Islamic, you're a terrorist. Right. Like these are things, these are generalizations they're making and they're trying to make- <laughs> You're an American nigga, you a, a exactly, sand nigga. A that's small they result, they're trying to generalize that as a whole. And so like, that's kind of what we need to get away from. Thank you. And I'm not, I, I, I agree that the, the way that the schooling, because it, there, there isn't a way out. And, and that's something just in the in the year and a half that I've been here that I see that needs to change. I've met, and I can't remember his name, but um, he's trying to empower, he, he's a, he was a writer from the St. Louis Dispatch. Um, What's the name? If you Google yes. that, I met and talked with him, habit. and he's all about trying to empower black youth to understand the to, to take initiative and, and have their own business and understand and understand all of that. And I like I'm all for that. I'm all for empowering people to try to get out. But and which we haven't even discussed yet. But when you're talking about tearing down the entire system. I don't see, I see that being very counterproductive. I, I see that I'm sure that- but You're saying they're being counterproductive because you still see Thank you, Delmon. Go right study now. for your midterms, I, baby. We I'm see you tomorrow. I'm seeing that, okay, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Okay. Obviously a huge godsend to this country. Okay. He, as far as I know, and it's been a while since I've had American history, I don't think he was calling for anarchy and to tear down the entire system and tear up the Constitution. Now, I will, he, he might not have been. We got the shortest month of the year. Okay, I'm just going to shut up. But it's just definitely want to change it. There's 27 radical. something. Wait, wait, I'm 29. You don't even know. I agree with that. It's 28 and, and days. See, and, and, and it's, it's a some, different day on and age. On a good year, it's 29. Okay, there we go. Right. You could point out yeah. to the shortest month, and we share it. Hold on, don't we share it? You could say, else. "Oh, February he only something. can drink here." It ain't even Black History Month. So now, because like in high schools and stuff, I don't even know if it's still celebrated. Those were we just had Columbus Day, but now you just don't have that sign that says "White Only." You know what I'm saying? Like you can't, you don't see those same eye sights to be able to identify with, and. Like just, just like how you were I mean, yeah, with, they like to bring school. up Martin Luther King, it's, but they don't like thing. to talk about Malcolm X and stuck with Carmichael, man. That's all I'm saying. Or trying to revise the school books and say they're no longer trying to have the word slavery. And they're trying to have the Middle Eastern. Because I feel like he made people more comfortable. Well, he was more comfortable. He was more middle of the line, middle of the road. Malcolm X was more like, fuck that. Like if I had been alive back then, I might have rolled with them. I ain't gonna lie, but like today, I tried to go to the nation of Islam, and honestly. But, you know, like, like, but these are things that, that your either. kids it's will too learn. Much segregation. How can you stop this Like, and at the point to where, like, they're feeding I got this family who like you. Like, to you. You, uh, you know what I mean? Like, parent, you say, okay, our dads are brothers. I, I gotta help my child <laughs> so, out. So, like, I can oh. get down with what that. What the fuck is that? <laughs> like, I went to you know what I'm saying? You can't say this ain't right. Because it's what the book has to say. You have to answer that the. So it's just funny like, you bring that up because there are I see so minute. many issues with You know, like no, the ju book judging a book by their cover has so got we need to, to acknowledge stop. that Period. regardless of how um unproud of some parts of our history that we may be, we need to acknowledge that it happened. Because Ignoring it is not doing anything. Is not doing anything. At all. I'm not asking you to not, not see the color. I'm good. asking you to see it and not judge it. I can't I can't control this no more either. Well I mean what he did is he took I uh, guess black they have things for that. Black culture but I don't the level to, it hadn't been. Like, but as you can see, we haven't reached the level it should be. So right. So what he did was radical, but obviously it wasn't enough. 
because yeah, he empowers to do it, but we still haven't made it. Where That's we why need people to be. were taken out because if you, if, oh, because appeasement is dangerous. Going, we exactly. got our little yeah, piece of like legislation. It's like, thank you. We're going to house. Be quiet That's now. So, so there's still more to be. Done. Oh, there's death. We should never go back in the house again. It's cold like shit. Oh yeah, I ain't from here. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is in the hall. I hope I'm reading some of it when I can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, justice for Mike Brown. Um, you can turn mute on or like get the fuck off my stream if you want to. Shut the fuck up, buddy. Well, you can just like get the fuck off my stream. What is it then that you're proposing? Saying that there needs to be systemic change, that the Constitution needs to be torn up. What? Are you because because check this out. For one, one yeah. thing, we did. Keep oh, that. I don't know about huh? you, no, we didn't but I know it's a uh, thing that it was written down that said people that look like me are only three fifths of a human being. <laughs> now, I you know, jamming, fifty thousand mega amps. I have like a few more. But like when we're marching, but, I mean, the police it's, it's have us trapped a lot of the times, and I'm gonna live stream the entire event. I have no idea when I'm gonna be able to leave, so I yeah, gotta it's, keep it's, battery it's powered. Like, uh, because here's the thing: you were so viewed as three fifths. Can I bring that here? Okay. You, matter of fact, I live stream all the protests, yeah, so if you guys want to go back through my archive and look at I, it. I, like, I know what you're referring to is when uh, the population is added together to representation. <laughs> yeah, for the census and also then for representation in Congress. Is that what you're referring you to? Okay. That's okay. But it, it's what I'm saying is for a person that's trying to be considered. Uh, a whole human that's trying to be able to attack these issues that you're speaking of it's hard when someone doesn't view you as a whole in human individual anyway so a lot of these things would have to be helped and attacked with multiple at multiple angles with multiple different races of people you know and it's not just me doing something to change systemic uh, the s systematic oh, yeah. system that's been that fucked the up from job it not, is you you hooks. you okay. me her, her it is oh, because know. it is things that, that kick, you know just like this for example chat stream. Uh, uh, english teacher loves english you can agree to that hard. It, you know but saying? he's like, not a good I math probably, teacher if it was mine, I'll probably you know what i'm saying just but you still need to know math too right same shit. we still got to be able to we have to be able to utilize the people that we have in this movement together and help each other to attack these the, yeah, this specific and this specific and this specific. And over and over. I might not know the, the most about English, but I damn sure know math. You know what I mean? So I can attack that differently than I would be able to attack English. My viewpoint and my, my motivation is going to be different behind wanting to change it than it would be for, you know? In a movement, in a movement like this, it's not everybody's job to go outside and check their face. Like, that's not everybody's job. It's not, it's not everybody's job in the movement. And part of the reason it got brought to SLU is because they know that SLU has the resources to ignite and, and motivate people who do have the resources outside of it. It might not, might not be their place to go shake it, but it might be their place to write up a proposal. It Thank be you. These systemic changes that we're talking about. I think it might, it might be some, a student, a law, a law student that's I know how y'all don't like me, but thank you. Going guys and had a great conversation, had these great dialogues. He's like, okay, now I'm passionate about this issue. Now I'm going to put forth my education, use my privilege to help change these systemic things and these things. That we need to do. So then, I just, I mean, I just want Martin to Luther King was a socialist. Like, I'm sorry. People are getting mad. I'm not saying it. Saying. Um, but like, you guys can talk about like when our country was founded. And yeah, a lot of like things we thought back then. But if you really like study uh, a lot of the things that they were moving for, like the, they set up a system where like the founding fathers believed that like people would like people themselves could make a change. People themselves would motivate if like somebody needed help, like they would help those people. They set up a system where it wasn't the government's job to do everything. It was more like they believed that in the goodness of people. They believed in like the activists of people. That's why I like, I like seeing people out here like doing things actually like somebody up and making it after because like so many people today are just like, oh well, fuck it, like whatever. Somebody just got somebody got shot. It's right. like it's like everybody's like, okay, whatever. But at the same time it's you guys are drawing an issue and so many times in our country like people just don't care anymore people don't try people don't and like where the the woman go there's talking about education like i was like she was like talking about how her grandmother was pushing her and pushing her and so many people today just like don't see the good in that anymore but like our country was founded so many years ago on 
the idea that people would try and push for change and push for things to happen, but so many, like, in today's age, people, like, and you're talking about, like, people with, like, white, like, white privilege. Well, so many people with white privilege don't even take advantage of it and just sit on their ass and just, la like, lazy and don't do anything. So, at the same time, like, some people would get that privilege and then just, like, which is which, which is, is like completely which is, jacked which is, up. Which well, is sad because then there's then there's people that you're saying like who don't have that, and people who are in some more other situation that you guys are talking about who don't have that ability to like come here and like get this education, which like I was so graciously given. Um, and it's it, it pisses me off to see people like just throw it straight away. Well, you're you're talking about like the selective white privilege. Like I could actively go access this, but I'm talking about just being able to walk down the street or drive yeah. your car. You know what I mean? Like that's that's shit that like it don't matter how fucking lazy you are or whatever. Like you're just afforded that. You know what I mean? So that. You know, the the selective part, yeah, I totally understand. And I, I feel you because, like, you have extra because I didn't get it. So, like, when you waste it, what the fuck? You know what I mean? But, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, the like the other parts, like, those are the things that are particularly bothersome. Like, dude, I just want to walk down the street. I just want to, I mean, yeah, so what if I smoke cigarettes or swishers or whatever the fuck I'm going to go get? But, like, I'm just walking down the street. Just like, you, can't you were you. Were out of no, no, no. That. I was just yeah. one quick thing on that, and I, I would want to continue the topic that we were just on. Now, if you see a white person walking down the street, covered in tats, piercings all over his face, you think that he is still, it, it's a matter of how you portray yourself. I say, man, they, I, I'm, I yeah, say, damn, they probably got hella tattoos, uh, you know, hella, like, I, I, you, they still you, have you know, more privilege than me. You wouldn't, like, even with that, because I've seen people like that, that, are portrayed even on TV as being cool as hell. Like, okay, NCIS, they got the old girl, Abby. She's the coolest, got motherfucking tattoos, persons, everything, but she's the shit, you know what I'm saying? But that's, so, but you wouldn't see that same person, like, like she's not viewed as negative, like, uh, she's viewed as the smartest motherfucker in there. Or, you know, this really smart one who has her own, like, little law firm or whatever, but she's like the president's little whore. Or, you know what I mean? Like, we're either, like, losing Isaiah Crack Mom or the ever impossible Claire Huxtable. Like, where is it the middle of the road, black mother who's just taking care of our children and our husband goes to work? Like, why don't we have that is something that is also an image that we are all familiar with. Like, even in, we don't have that. Like, those are the images that are per perpetrated in society. So when you go by, you be like, look at this bitch on welfare. I got food stamps. Like, she can't be working two jobs in the same city to be able to afford and live in Paris for her kids. Like, those are the types of things that we're talking about and that we need to combat. That's just it. Yeah, so go back to what you said, and right? the white savior complex yeah, that comes like, from was not there. But anyway. Change, like, we were built for people to inspire change. But also, government was only in place to protect our rights. So when... In a sense, like if you look at the way government sometimes, you know, deceives us, like media, mainstream media, they're going beyond what they were put in place to do. Like, and like in, in a certain sense. Our government sense, is so blown out of proportion. Exactly. It, it is so, which is hindering our, the people to, to help other people. Because like one thing that I think is, one of the most important things is for the black youth in particular to be taught their own value. Because I think the media, oh, power. The, the media will, will put down blacks to value themselves yes. especially the youth so to teach black kids that you know, they have value and they have something different to bring to the table that that other people don't have based on their individual experiences and a culture that they've been through that no one else has experienced that they have value that nobody else has and that they should find a way to use that value for for a positive but i think that's something that honestly is a pr people don't want them to, to start to understand of course of course they don't okay so anyways you just i i agree 100 percent with that everyone needs to be taught the value that they have and that our government the size of our government and things that our government is involved in they have absolutely no right being there so but when i hear you calling for um calling for Essential, I mean, anarchy in a way. I'm not saying yeah, you, but way, yeah. but when you're talking about tearing up the Constitution and all of that, when I think of anarchy like that, I think about socialism and communism. And if you were to go to one of those routes of I did, Jador. Then there's just you're asking for way more oppression and way more government involvement. Mm. So I guess that I find it really counterproductive there that if you're calling for anarchy and to tear down the system that we have but unless you plan on pushing something that 
an alternative. An alternative that we that can go to. Isn't yeah, we talked about I mean, that yeah, earlier yeah, yeah. tonight. I mean, we have alternative ideas and alternative, so, but it's. But like, if the if the government was to shut down, which they have already done, let's not fake, let's not, and and actually, because we're talking about the fact that we want to restore legal protections to our drinking water nationally, the Republican Party is also threatening to shut down because of the Clean Water Act, um, and trying to restore the loopholes in that, which is fucked up because we should all be able to drink clean drinking water. But anyways, um, if the government was to shut down, like. Guess what? Food still grows, rain still falls. We will find a way. As a matter of fact, if we weren't crippled by capitalism, some people whose first love was to do something like computer science may be actually able to go do that and be taught. Because I know a lot of uh, IT people who never went to school for that. They learned by people that they know. You know what I'm saying? So we need to stop. We need to get out of the idea that if shit shut down, that we would just cease to exist. We would remember how to live. It's just like we used to drink water like in we used to take around thermoses and stuff if we were thirsty you drink out of a water fountain or a gar our garden halls even like now we're fucking littering and having hella plastic bottles and we act like we don't know how to to transport water you know what i'm saying like seriously so <laughs> you know what i mean like we will survive if this establishment shuts down and when we talk about ripping up the constitution it's because as black people when we go out and talk about justice which is supposed to be our first amendment right that shit is is valuable as toilet paper like they don't give a fuck about it so we in turn don't don't give a fuck about it because it obviously doesn't apply to us. That's why the flag is upside down because you told me I was a whole person, but I'm in distress like a motherfucker. But when you sent the National Guard, you didn't send him here to say, oh, let these people protest until the grand jury makes their decision. You sent him here to say, let's restore, restore the peace, which means restore the peace under which he was killed, which means shut up, nigger, know your fucking place in this country. Like, see what I'm saying? So if the government was to shut down, if it really was, if this establishment was to end, we would not cease to exist. If anything, I argue that we would exist more efficiently. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sorry, but my definition of anarchy is not fucking violent chaos. But I'm like, I had more anarchists show up to my baby's baby shower. I had over 200 people. I didn't buy nothing for him until he was damn near eight months old because of the anarchists in the community, which only showed me that it meant love in the face of oppression. Like, if you meant it was illegal where I can't stand outside and feed people because of some bullshit cottage law, cottage kitchen laws, then take me the fuck to jail because homeless people deserve to eat, period. So, like, if this establishment is broke down, then fuck it. Like it really, what has it done except for continue to kill us and then separate us so much that you you have hard like we need to have hour long conversations for people to understand this. So you brought up homeless people. I I was unfortunately not able to go tonight because I had too many tests to study for. But on Wednesday nights, I go out and I take food and not just food but conversation to homeless. Great. People. So I see that there's an issue there. Right. But. I don't look at that and say, okay, I'm going to go tear down the Constitution. Right, because, that. but no, because I'm you saying, get the benefit of the Constitution. Your rights don't get violated by police when you walk down the street because of the color of your skin. So the Constitution is more valuable to you. Like I said, I was a registered Republican. Don't fuck around. Like, I don't know. For real, Bill of Rights, Constitution, I'm serious as shit. But it doesn't apply to me is what I've learned coming out here just to film, to film as a freelance journalist legitimized by the ACLU. Just to film, like my mind was blown. Like that's why I don't even have faith in electoral politics anymore. And I was a registered Republican. That got to mean something as a black woman in America. Like I came outside and was like, well, what the fuck? Like I've been debating competitively in parliamentary debate in NFALD and I talk about these things and I win rounds because theoretically, by the letter of the law, in this classroom, it's correct. But when I come outside and I watch it actually, um, right, when I watch it play out in the street, when I see people try to access their rights, I see differences based on their race and class status. But like with Occupy Oakland, this is why I'm like, you will be targeted if you're white, if you are a nigger lover. If you down there arguing with us, then you gonna get kettled with us. You gonna get tear gas with us. But if you watch my streams for the past few nights, when they arrest you, they arrest you with less violence than they arrest him. He gonna get slammed on the ground and dragged and shit. And when we when he gets out, he gonna be lumped up and have scratches all over him. But when you come out, you be like, oh my zip ties weren't that tight. They were really nice to me. Like it's still a difference. And that's where the shit is a problem. So yeah, if the establishment falls, so. then like say, whatever. If, if you speaking up when they arrest you, then that's when they tighten your, oh, uh, hold on, he, he on the wrong, so let's tighten him up a little bit. Right, so Constitution, Bill of Rights and flag, like I can relate so much to that argument that it really isn't that valuable. And it's not because I take the value from it. It's because it's been shown to me empirically like that the value does not hold true when it comes down to me because of the color of my skin and nothing else. 
I, okay, so, uh, yeah, okay, so you said the Constitution has more value to him uh, than it does to you. Okay, so say say we got rid of the Constitution and then, you know, you have the same people. Then it's human rights. But then you, what, what would you suggest we put into place? Um, yeah, what, I, what, how, see, you have the same people here still, but if you change, like, if you got these rules, you got rid of them, you got more, new rules, you still have the same people with the same mentality. Uh, no, 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 I'm not so, saying get new rules. I'm saying that all of us should have that equal right. But what I'm saying is as it stands in the legislation, it says we do. But when we come out into the street, it's very evident that that message is not trickled down. Okay, so it's you see not what a I mean? constitution's issue then. No. No, but that's what I'm saying. The way that it looks. That is... That's what I'm saying. So wait, hold. On. I just want to. So is it getting bogged down in one one little piece of this? And yeah. Right. Kind of focus in on the Constitution. When, well, no, but like you, you know, like asking what should people do? Yeah. Well, like you should, you I mean, I, I mean, I know what. Right. Do, but like you know, like you know, the Constitution can be amended and things like that. You know, we can add to it and things like that. But I mean, like, so it's not the Constitution issue. It's you know the the people issue, and you know, we come out here in public. That's the issue. Right? It's a human oh, rights it's issue. issue. It's a human right. It's a human yeah. right issue that we do not hold our governmental entities responsible when they selectively enforce laws based on the color of our skin and when we are not able to access rights because of the color of our skin um, and I'm like and I'm saying this because I'm like I stand here and I tell you I'm a black woman but my grandmother is from Yokohama Japan I would not have been in this country if it was not for the military specifically because of how my family is formed I was raised by her in Oakland California the city where the Black Panther Party was founded so in the house speaking Japanese is my first language I'm going to school I'm saying goodbye to her in Japanese I come outside you a nigga I go with my black friends, they know I'm Japanese, I'm not even fitting in with them. I go with my Asian friends, I don't fit in with them because I'm black. So it's too much judging by the color of our skin. We are not allowed to be ourselves. We're not allowed to be human. So really what this is, it's a human rights issue, but we are not effectively going to be able to combat these things if we don't look at it through the lens of analysis of race because we continue to be subjected to it because of our race. We can even look at the history of reparations given to people who have faced atrocities in this country or globally. Like the indigenous people, I'm, the, what's happening to them is continually fucked up. Like it's still fucked up. They do get retro, rever, reservations. They do get proceeds from casinos. If by chance they somehow manage to salvage their history that has been completely decimated and legitimize their tribe through the government. So that's why I'm like, their shit is still fucked up, but they got something. For Japanese families, if you are in an internment camp in the United States, you got $20,000. For, huh? A lot of, um, I learned this in world history in high school, that a lot of the Japanese people who did lose their land and stuff like that, today, that's that's Malibu. That's that's million dollar property that they got fucked out of by the US government. Yeah. That's, and they got twenty thousand dollars. They got $20,000, but you know what we got? But do you know, but that's what I'm saying. Even if you look at, and I know it's a touchy subject for people, and I am, I'm, I just think we shouldn't kill each other as humans, and let me say that before I go here. But even if we look at the Jewish survivors of the Hitler, of the, the Jewish Holocaust, and the, how the, the Israel got established as a nation and recognized by the United States without consulting the UN, and how they promised them military aid, like that was reparations for what happened in Auschwitz and these different co concentration camps in Germany. But for slaves, you literally promised us. You said we would get reparations. You said we would get 40 acres and a mule. Then you changed it from life, life liberty, and the pursuit of property, because we were property, to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And then all of a sudden, it was not enough property to go around. So the caste system that got built, it got built on, on top of our back. So when people say we're at the bottom, that's not true. The bottom is on top of us. So when we're talking about systemic racism and how this problem is has been gone going, we really do have to consider the original colonization period of this country. Like when white people came over, they were had broke white servants and they had to depend on the rich ones to go back for resources, et cetera, et cetera, and do that work, right? But then when the slaves came in, it was like, we white, we don't eat there. We white, we don't eat that. We don't live here. Then the racial the, the racial divide was highlighted to continue to allow the system to 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 progress, you know what I mean, and to grow. And so when we have these old oh, Brown versus the Board of Education, well, you know, and things like that, when we have these one laws, that these these singular laws that happen and say, oh, you're equal now, you're equal now, but we really still aren't. Like we weren't even allowed to vote until the 60s. So like shit, no, we still not voting because we still don't see how that shit really helps us do anything. We got a black president in there that doesn't even have slave blood and doesn't fight for black people. We got a black president who said there's never ever a reason to fight against law enforcement as Americans. Y'all should be mad about that. That's why we have a second fucking amendment. 
Like if something goes wrong and our government becomes tyrannical or if something goes wrong and we are invaded, we do have a reason. So like, you know what I'm saying? Like at some point we got to stop with the fact that like, oh, you know, it doesn't happen to me. So I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like you can't legitimize or delegitimize my, my, my experiences or my form of protest because you don't live it, but I'm willing to have a conversation with you about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like two, two points uh, that you mentioned throughout your uh, talk there. Uh, one thing is, uh, so you have a problem with the government system, but you just admitted that you guys don't want to vote. Because um, I, know, I know, like, I know, like, probably you do, and like, I, I just said, but, but I, I just want to, like, you, you even said, like, the way our government system works is the people who want something, you see the candidates, you vote for your candidates, you see their issues, and those are, oh, those are issues I want, so you're gonna vote for them. But you kind of just hit on the fact that, like, your like the people that you're tr- all the people that you guys are out here trying to help like they're not voting so like maybe have them vote like the right not people a, and well let's check all, it out with the redistricting the other, the policies thing, okay like, go ahead the, the other thing is uh this has always just been a th- like a thought of mine this is like deep issue but uh you you said like because like slavery happened and we promised some like reparations, reparations. um and you kind of just said it like uh we like Give me my reparations. But like, I was born 1995. Everybody here is born 30, like within the last right. 40 some years. But you still uh, been profiting why, off why of the system. That, like, why do you now? Why do you get to have white privilege that fucking came from slavery? Like, I, it's been a trickle down. Your privilege has been a trickle down from slavery. I was born in my family. Uh, you completely have family white family privilege. Too. Yeah, exactly. But and, you have but white I privilege. Don't have, I don't have the ability to have that privilege. Like, here's the thing. You can drive in West County and not get second guessed and not looked at like, you know, but I can, if I ride in West County like I'm looking right now, you've spoken with me. I got this hood on just like this. Do you think I'm going to get fucked with? Yes. I know I am. I know it. You know what I'm saying? But you had a conversation with me. Do I look like I'm a thug? Be honest. Oh, be, oh, oh I mean, wait, wait. I mean, I, you say, you <laughs> might look like a thug. Be honest. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let me take this off. Like Let me, do I look like a thug now? Hold on. <laughs> hold on, you like, hold on. I got to do the five. I mean, I, I'm, just, I'm just being real. Like, these are, this is part of privilege. Because you can go places that you don't have to worry about a second guess. Like, if I drive in West County, I'm already knowing. The cold part is, I, I gotta look, I gotta this look brother out. right here, I gotta look out for, and for this brother problem. right here, he got on a, a tie, and he got on some slacks, that and he will be too. stopped with five fucking police cars the same as him. Yeah. That's a problem. It's the skin look, color. he could be a doctor. He, he I could be a guy in the street. Sorry, sorry. We both could get pulled over. It doesn't matter what our occupation is, it's how we look. <laughs> yeah. John Stewart did a thing um, on one of his episodes in the last two weeks yes. about his producer and a cameraman, <laughs> and uh, they were going to film something in New York, and it was at a, um, I don't know what building it was, but it was a nicer building, and they had security, and they their, cameraman, cameraman. their cameraman was, um, was white, and he walked into this building, he was dressed, rag- not raggedy clothes, but he wasn't dressed up very nice. Basically looked homeless, and he didn't look good. And after him, the producer, who was black, came in, dressed up in a suit and tie, mm-hmm. looking fancy. And what let him in? Which one of them do you think got stopped by security? The the him. The black guy. Yeah. Dressed up all nice. Yeah. So that is just the white man's privilege. That is white privilege. He didn't ask for it. Maybe he did have to grow up working That's hard. He was born into a poor Thank family, you. whatever. Nice to meet you too. But he automatically has that white privilege of being able to walk into that building without being second guest, even though the black man is dressed in way nicer clothes. And was the producer, so you re- you see what I'm saying? Like, that that's the shit that we're talking about. And, and just like it's not your fault, it's not our fault either. You know what I mean? But it rested on our shoulders, which means it also rests on yours. And that's an unfortunate yeah, like, reality. This, this, this yeah. white privilege that you keep bringing up, like, I can't, I'm sorry, like, I can't, like, give it out. No, I'm, a, I'm a nice guy. I'm a nice guy. I could like, hey, hey, right? I, I also like, want to. I want to say, like, you know, I, I think we should, we, we should, we should just leave this white privilege thing out, because like, I don't see that. Like, I'm of Asian descent. Like, I don't see this white privilege thing, man. Like, 
And you just said, like, you know, you're saying how, you know. But y'all are all smart and really good at math. See, that's, <laughs> that's a racial stereotype. Yeah, yeah that's it. No, okay, right. See what I'm, but you see what I'm saying? See, that's like, what we, that's what you're trying to stop, right? Yeah. See, that's what so you're Because, like, I'm, my grandmother is, I'm Japanese. That don't mean I do good calculus. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. So, I think we should, like, as much as we're trying to eliminate, like, you know, this racial profiling thing as right. well, we should eliminate this whole white privilege thing, you know, like, he, I've been trying to get over, but I gotta, I'm filming. Eliminate this label, cause like, hey. I'm gonna shut down as soon as I finish talking, I don't think gonna be around for a second. Okay. I didn't grow up like that, you know, that's what I'm saying, like, so as much as we're trying to, we, we should eliminate this label of stereoty uh, stereotyping of black people, we should eliminate this label of white privilege, too, like, you can't just, you know, you can't just be like, you know, these guys have all this privilege, and you know what, I, I mean, I'm walking down the street, you know, I'm looking at everybody, I don't think that, you know, we shouldn't, <clears throat> on both fronts, we should not think that. No, you agree with me that on both fronts we shouldn't think that, and then that's how that's how we continue change. I think is that we, we shouldn't think about it. But we can't. But we can't get rid of it. Like I can't wash my skin color off. My the fucked up part is my grandma used to be like, Jessica, you so look at black today. Go take a food up. Like I can go wash it off. That's what it means. Go take a bath. Like I can wash it off. Like you can't. Like okay, you know, actually they have creams and shit for it now for both of us. You know, y'all got tanning beds, I got cream, whatever. I can be light, you can be dark or orange or whatever, because the tanning shit looks weird. But you know what I mean. Like my thing is that the point is to talk about the black experience in America means I can't ignore that the fact that white privilege exists. I would love for white privilege, blah blah blah, blah white privilege to not exist. You know what I mean? Like. It's but fucked I, up, but it's a, it's a truth. That, like I grew up not knowing that white privilege existed. So, but here here's something you might okay you might not have known. Well, can I privilege. ask what what ethnicity are you? I'm like, Chinese. Okay, you so might, you know about Chinese, Chinese paper sons. Yeah. Right. Okay. So y'all had some fucked up history in exactly. America as and well. So, like, this was another question I want to ask. Like so like you know my people had <laughs> slaves too, and you know what like you know what's you know, you earlier you mentioned, you know, it was because of slavery and oppression, and things like that, that, you know, white people, you know, are demeaning you guys and like, you know, profiling you guys. But then we had slaves, too. But, you know, you I guys can't even bring your women over and I you weren't allowed to assimilate into white culture. I don't That's see the issues yeah. that we I don't I mean, I just don't see my people facing the same issues today. I don't like I, you know, I just wondering why it's like that, you know. Wow. I mean, but you do, because you guys do math really, really fucking well, and you can all cook, and you all know fucking kung fu and shit. Because, <laughs> I, no, I, but I, see, I, that's what I'm saying. You do face that issue, but you just don't even realize it. You see what I'm saying? When you walking around, that's what people think about you. Period. I, I because you're Asian. I, I matter of fact, <laughs> matter of fact, let me talk really loud and slow to you because of your eyes. You see what I'm saying? Like, that that's kind of shit. It, you see what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, no, no, no. I'm, I definitely don't mean that. Like, I'm not. But you see what I'm saying? Like, that's, 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 that's every day for us. And it's not as bad for you. Like, some, like, all the other, like, Chinese people that are, like, just coming here, like, from before. It's a little different. Like, I, let, like, me, let me, let me, let me yeah, tell you something. You, you have the chance to walk at a place without, you know, you could drive. You, it's, it's, it's way, way more easier, you know, it's way more harder for us. Not to get, we going to get pulled over, but you you black and you driving, you will get pulled over. Your car could be clean, your wreck could be clean, but you will, you will get pulled over. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you one thing that, I'm gonna tell you one thing that. the description uh, of what, of 28 fucking difference. percent of this country? How about the statistics for this city of what? Like I love it in Oakland, it was like we pulled over guns drawn on these two young boys who are walking down the street. They're not even from fucking Ethiopia, had just graduated. One of them was on his way to college. Guns drawn because they fit the description of two black men walking down the street and one in a blue shirt. That's over 50% of the city. Change the color of the shirt on maybe a Raider game day and you got more. You see what I'm saying? So you can just pull guns on people because we black. Like, cause all you niggas look the same. You look the same, they look the same, they all wearing black, y'all look the same. Like, that's the problem, you know what I mean? And and yes, it does f affect Asian culture. Because, fuck it, you Chinese, Japanese, I don't even know, but you know what I'm saying? Sushi, you eat sushi, right? Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, it affects you in a way that you don't understand, like, maybe don't notice, because it's not as damning to you. You're not criminalized because of it. As a matter of fact, you're almost put on a pedestal because of it. Because Asian people are smart, you know what I mean? And, you think I have Asian privilege then? 
I, I, I mean, I'm is it a subsect of white privilege? But no, the fucked up part is people who don't know the history of Chinese people in America will never understand that. I, I'm very familiar with both Japanese people needing to solidify themselves in the sugar industry and with the Chinese paper sons and the struggle with that. So it's like we're not I'm not I do not mean to devalue that at all. That's not what I'm saying. I am saying that you do it's suffer from some form of, form of it. But like I said, it puts you on more of a pedestal as to where it damns us. You know what I mean? It becomes almost like there's a, there's a concept in, 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 the so, in the social sphere of like model citizen and, that, and like that. That's that's the discrimination that's, that's towards Asians. Like you're viewed no matter no matter what you are, like you're the model citizen because stereotypically you're smart. You can, you do you're doing you're doing what what we need you to do in the community by going to school and doing what you're supposed to do and being educated. Wow. The black, the black stereotype and the things like when I walk down the street, it's, it's, it's all negative. And you got a I gun mean, and drugs absolutely. in your backpack. And, that, and that's really what it's about, cause it's not that they're, it's not that your stereotypes aren't bad. It's just they're they're not viewed as at the same way that ours are. You know what I mean? Because at the same degree, at the can, same degree. You, like you can benefit from your stereotype, right? Or not. Like like you say, somebody says, "Oh, you're smart." Thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Like, I mean, anytime somebody says, oh, you're smart in your stereotype, you already won. Right. You know but if mean? you calling me like, an ignorant like, porch I monkey, mean, like, am I ignorant? I mean, like, and then I'm going to prove you another point. Uh, it is the simple fact that or a monkey. I look black, but I'm not <laughs> black. I'm not from here. I am black. I'm from Africa. But if the police pull me over, guess what? I'm treated like a black person until they look my ID. You know what that right? You know and, until I started speaking another language or something, they won't believe me. once they see my ID, it's a whole different story. Oh, how are you? So how you was think, back there? You know what I'm you saying? You think the police are going to treat you totally different because of your skin color? Yes. I'm sorry, that is absolutely incorrect. And how could you tell us that because you're not black? I got tickets right okay. now. I got, I got pulled over. I got pulled over if I'm speeding, anything like that. How many cars that? pull you over? What? I don't know, like two or three. And exactly. Do you mind not filming me? No, I'm um, no, I I do mind. So I do have a right. I also do. Yeah, we yeah, but this is yeah, this you yeah, this live, man. All right, fine. Then I'm not gonna speak. Yeah. Okay. okay. My brother is a heroin addict and a yeah, drug dealer. Yeah. He was. Have a good like, night. Thank you. He was hey, caught hey, and thank you. Have a good night, you guys. Thank you. Can I? Appreciate you coming. I guess one other quick question. Yeah. So, um, I, I, no, that's okay. I'm totally good. All the protests I, yeah. that yeah. have yeah. been going on, and I realized that you had brought up you know, the brutality of the National like, Guard and all of that. And for the peaceful protesters, yes, it's horrible that they are being treated that way. However, there are people that are taking advantage of that situation and are the ones that are are the ones that are throwing knives at cops. Knives? American flags. Yes, there were knives. Co opting. Okay. Well, I say co opting, but okay. I, I I don't I don't understand, it, especially because it's it's not the people that are from Ferguson that are the ones that are destroying it. But still, like, the people that, if, if you want to have a peaceful conversation, then the people that are coming in, that are claiming to be a part of that group, but are the ones that are destroying property and destroying other people's livelihoods that haven't done anything. And very well, some of those people may have been black that own those businesses. And the people that they have gone out, they, they've... Um, they haven't become product of, of the environment. They, they've escaped that. They've, they've worked their butts to, to have what they have, and, and you're destroying that. So I guess that my biggest concern with having you here is that it's great to have a conversation, and I agree that that's something that a conversation should be had. But if people took advantage of the protests when you guys weren't there, and you put people's businesses and not not saying you guys personally right, 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 right. but but the whole protest as a whole put their lives at risk then what's to prevent that they aren't going to come here and take advantage of the same situation i'm gonna tell you here's the, here's the only thing those well, we situations talking about black i don't know if anybody knew fuck about like, a window. the you're talking about the looting okay first like with the quick trip a lot of people don't even know they had the insurance. First, hold up, hold up, Mike up. Brown can't get fucking hold up, hold brought to life back by insurance. Because a lot of people don't even realize before when the quick trip, before it was burnt down and when it was broke into, it just it wasn't a person that was uh, it wasn't a person that looked like me. Honestly, it was a white guy that threw a break through the window and started burning it down. But it was opportunist criminals that were there that benefited. Now and and, and he was on camera too. 
You know what I mean? Like real talk. Now, and it, it, I think I think the only way to because it has been other protests that have gone on since then. Like what you're speaking on has happened 65, six days ago, and. It happens yes, in it, every social it, it, it's movement. Going to, it's stuff like that's going to happen. Just, just like, you know. It happens just, in every social movement, which means it's not mutually strong, exclusive. Which means people, people are going to do that. So strong, be able to stop that situation from happening. Because, just like if it was a situation that occurred here, we would de-escalate that situation. Why? Because that's what we're supposed to do as humans. Because we don't want to see you fucked up or you fucked up. You know what I mean? And, and, I, and I, I see all of it, and it's, it's a great point that you brought up that that was a white person that took advantage of, and then because of that, the greater whole of the people are now looked at as that they're the ones that are responsible for that. Also, if somebody did throw a rock or a little switchblade or a water bottle at a police officer in full riot gear and it bounced harmlessly off their Kevlar, I don't give no fucks about that. None. And if you wouldn't want to take the risk, don't be a police officer. Be a fucking fireman running a fire and see how race, not racist that shit is. It's, I, I don't. But <laughs> they're, they're, they're wearing, I, I don't care that they're wearing Kevlar vests. Well, they it's still, it, still what that's representing that you are throwing knives at someone now, else. Have, have, did, did they talk about but what they happened shot to the somebody like fuck. Or the, whatever was thrown? I, I, I haven't. I, so I, if I one person throws a knife, then let me problem. unleash tear gas into a crowd with disabled people, asthmatics, okay. and children, then kettle them and shoot it, it, rubber bullets into the crowd. Like one water bottle or a knife or a pebble. That's bullshit. Who had, Go had get the person that run, did that well, shit and arrest them. Had to be escorted away because it was tear gas and, and flash grenades and stuff. Like, it's... It's not like people are really trying. Like I don't think that ninety-year-old lady was gonna be trying to throw. No. You know what I mean? And, uh, and like that's what I'm, I'm saying. Not saying her because, like I said, the majority, the overwhelming majority, are peaceful and have no desire to do something like that. However, there are still people that that and I can't remember of the very socialist radical thing. Infiltrators talks about co-opters never let a good crisis go to waste. There are people that take advantage I just of the situation the that you are going, that, that you are protesting right now, that I fear could be brought here and put other people at risk. Not, not saying that you would do. I'm not saying by any means that any of the people here would do it because we've had a great conversation tonight. But I don't see how, especially that there's no. It's not like you guys are swiped in to know that you are a part of this. There's no, like the other night when you guys, when you came at 1.30 in the morning, you can't honestly tell me that 18, out of 1,800 people, not one person had a knife or not one person had a gun, that if something would have happened, and I'm not saying that because of the, I'm not saying because- You can't tell me once you get your midterm grades back that one person won't come shoot up this whole fucking school. That's what I'm saying. Like, I can't control that shit with one individual gonna do on some crazy shit one day. I understand, but there's people that have, that stay out in the country. They got big guns and gun lock, locks and, and, and gun lockers that are stocked. Do you think they're gonna come and shoot you up? But you know they got them. However they can. Right, I mean, but you know yeah. they got them. But are you worried about them every day? No. My but point, They so, aren't here. But how do you know? How do you know? My point. How do you know somebody don't got a gun locker up there but under their bed normal, right now? Like, so put, put it like this, the situation that happened at, what college was that, because of my mind? Uh, big foul. Did you think that that was going to happen? I'm sorry, I which uh, in in uh, Virginia. Okay. Like, do you think that was going to happen? Like, no, I I did not think that was going to happen. Damn, now, I, now, did, go to sleep. Now, you got midterms in the morning, homie. I'm mentally, going to save he this. Mental problems, and the government should have never allowed him to uh, acquire those weapons. Right. So now, when you white right. and you do some crazy no, no, shit, you got a mental now, health issue. Now, but when you black, you a criminal and a thug and a drug dealer, and you need to go to jail forever. I, I think he, he killed, killed himself. himself. Okay. Now, that's the way he had to go out, because he wasn't going to get shot. He, he took his own life. Now, I could go to James home. Did he get killed? I don't know. Okay, okay, movie theater? Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, not, like, nobody these are, these got killed. Black people get killed. Okay. We get killed for now, selling a cigarette. If you ask me if I got an extra cigarette, I just don't, because they don't have an extra one in the pack. They come in 20. I get chucked to death for shit like that. police have to, because I step outside my door, I don't know if I am going to have to deal with police shooting me. Uh, the the gang violence, poverty, the food killing me. I don't know what I have to, and I mentally could be fucking crazy. But 
I have to stay sane because that's what I have to do. No, because these, that's these my life. People, these people don't even know what's right from wrong. They are so messed up. Well, then I got it. There's a black man in jail in Oakland right now with a mental health issue for jigging a, a blanket like out of a garbage can because the police was like, don't really, take it out. Really he was like, I'm cold. And you can function on a daily basis. You can support he yourself. He could too because he went to that Batman movie. Okay. He knew how to pay that ticket. Okay. Man, he was mad because somebody wouldn't be what? He knew he how to use out. a fucking gun. A motherfucking gun. That's what it, what are you trying to get at? I'm trying to say that the, you're trying to say he wasn't, he was crazy and he wasn't able to function. He was functioning perfectly because he functioned all His that time. His mind isn't right. How do you know? What about the No school normal school. person isn't just going to go start lighting people up just for the hell of it. And no black person no, no, and, 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 and and a protest you, is going to come up here. Hold on. And no black I'm person, and I'm no like, black person runs up to police cars and just punches them in their fucking face. And, oh, I know some real thugs, and they ain't doing that shit. But you would believe that? No way. You know what? No Crazy as shit. We want to stay away from the police. We ain't running up to their car and reaching in that shit. What the fuck? Unarmed black teenagers all the time. No, he came over here with an agenda, obviously. And they always saying we current. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. I'm talking, I'm talking. They always saying. This is some aggressive conversation here. Say a black cop killed a white teenager. That did happen. He would be in jail right away. When we be here, when we be here. Like with this, with would, no, because that happened, and oh, they're yeah. demanding hold justice, hold and the police the aren't showing up. Are with the justice, just because the, the kid getting shot is white. With the justice, the with the justice system, system taking place. It was nice meeting you once again. Reason. Thank you very much. All right, bro. Uh, nice, nice talk to you. Do you think the justice system would be taken care of? Uh, would take care of that situation? From, you know from, what? From what? No, you no, think, it's not even. There is an empiric example right now. Uh, there is a black cop that shot a white boy. They like, are yeah. fighting for justice right now. But the difference between their peaceful protests and the one down here is that you don't have a couple Tank. hundred riot police, like Tank. several vans yeah, and SWAT. You see what I'm saying? I got, so, it, I got hit with, yes, I think I that. I just think cousins, if you man. kill somebody, yeah, yeah, you should yeah, fucking yeah. have to go deal exactly. with justice no matter, because of that. No what period. Right, exactly. right. No period. Yeah. I don't give a fuck if you Palestinian and Israeli. Israeli, yeah. excuse me. If you black versus white, I don't give a damn. Human and human. You should not be killing one another. Yeah, so if you got a badge and your job is to protect and serve the community, then you have committed an even more egregious crime, and you need to be looked at very closely by the letter of the law. But to the point to where we are having a conversation about convicting an individual, I mean, not even convicting, excuse me, charging an individual with something that it is not even debatable if it happened or not. We all know it did. Like, let's just go, if he's going to really go through the justice channels, then let him do that. Why is he not, we already know he's been charged. Let the grand jury come out on the indictment. I mean, on the, um, the, 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 um, <laughs> shit, I just said it. When they when they convict him on the conviction, you know what I mean. Like we don't need to have a conversation on whether to charge him. He did it. But if it was a if it was a if it wasn't if this wasn't the situation, if it was another white kid, then this justice would be done easier. If it you know what I'm saying, if it was any other situation that didn't have the racial tensions, I am of the opinion that we would not have this this situation now. But because it was a white police officer and a black man, which continues to happen on state to state to state to state, then this becomes an issue. I just feel like it's a human rights issue. We just need to be treated human. I don't give a fuck if he got this on right here. Okay, but I don't care if he has every single right that we all have. You are an American citizen. You have freedom. You can hold practice. Up, hold up. Prove me I'm an American citizen then. Show me the doc. Hold on. Fuck no. Show, show me I'm just saying. Well, I'm just saying that if you, if you are, if, then we all have the same rights. I'm just, just because of your skin color doesn't mean you can what practice. Excuse me, okay. sir. My name. My first of all, my name is Bella. Okay. Um, you came in. Okay, I'm trying to. I'm trying to yeah, be cordial I'm with you. Saying, okay. Yeah. So before you came in, we had already kind of discussed this, okay. and we were talking about the fact that. I was a registered Republican before I started coming and documenting the protest scenarios. Okay. And so when I'm, you know, debating competitively for the state of California, which I'm not sure if you know, most lawyers come out of, um, I'm debated competitively the, the, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and all of these things. I'm under the impression that as an American citizen, I have the right, regardless of my skin color. But when I... What you mean? Ain't nobody see this is the problem we grew up. Just walk away. Please. Just walk away.
This is live on the internet. This is live on the internet. Walk away. This is live on the internet. This is live on the internet. Watch your vlog. No, no, hold on. Hey, I'm trying to go out that way. No, no, no. Oh, you can That's not what this is about. Thank you. Be smart. It's not about that. Be smart. Those stripes. And stars on our flag, and it's bullshit that you're treating it like that. The Supreme Court, the Supreme Court stated that that was a perfectly acceptable form of first of free speech, sir. Service men and women, to please no, do not, do not feed that. So we can have our freedom in America. Not that you're going to treat it. I'm sorry, that is wrong. Okay. Hey, hey. Regulators, mount let up. Me, let you me get this. Bye. 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 Hey, you know, this was a joke. No, wait, I can stay here. No, sir, you are you are inciting. You are inciting. We want to have a productive conversation. Please tone it down. If anybody would like to see the receipt for that flag, I can show you the receipt. It's my flag. You ain't gotta show nobody I don't want anybody to touch my property. Okay. 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 Fine. That's your property. What does the receipt have to do with anything? Hey guys. The receipt don't have nothing to do with this. Hey guys, look. It's this is way bigger than some petty bullshit. Okay. Right. That flag ain't there. This ain't, right. That's, that's not what we're here for. Okay. That's yeah. material. Y'all burn. The flag is not material. The flag represents our freedom. Whose freedom? Who's freedom? Who's freedom? freedom? Who's freedom? Who's freedom? freedom? Your freedom? No, 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 no. Freedom. You're in America. Wait. You're free. The definition. The definition. If you know so much, the upside down flag means citizens in distress. If they're talking about the murder of black people and they are black community mortal distress. Yeah, because they're dying. Because they are dying. Because they are dying. Because they are dying. We can't walk down the street like you can. We can't take this. Okay, please walk away. Why would you just set that shit on fire right here? I do not care. That is fucking fabric. You need to be outraged over dead people. So what? I'm tired of doing the fucking shuffle for everybody else to feel comfortable. Oh well. And then this idea that you can just come take somebody else's shit. Like, no, I can hang a fucking flag the way I want to, regardless of how you Um, as an American citizen, that means that means citizens in distress. We don't have their freedom. That's what I'm saying. Citizens in distress. We out here talking about the fact that black people are killed without any due process. Judge, jury, executioner, shut up, nigga, bam. Like we in distress. You killing our babies. Right. And he said, oh, well, that represents our freedom. No, that represents your freedom. White privilege. That represents your freedom. You felt free to touch my shit. As black people, we can't even have honor shit. Exactly. You felt free to touch our shit. All right. Let me sit now. I'm about to smoke a cigarette because that's what I'm going to say. Smoke a cigarette. You see what he's doing? No, no, no. Hey, what if you call that one like a dinosaur? You can't walk up on our stuff. Are these police sirens at it this way? No, when he walked up, it's on my stream. He was very aggressive. You know what? Excuse me, sir. I've been filming this entire event. I've been filming this entire thing. I, I got everything. When they came, we were having a peaceful conversation. The guy came over. He's very aggressive. We attempted to continue to have a conversation with him. Another gentleman walked over with his girlfriend and attempted to take the flag down. You know, this has been an issue of contention here. And so they walked over to try to keep the flag in the position that they had meant it for for the protest and there's some arguing here at which point in time this gentleman here referred to people as niggers and continue to talk about how that we're you know pieces of shit because we're hanging the flag upside down and we don't know what we're meaning which one of these gentlemen is this is the one in the plaid shirt when he first walked up he and his friends were very aggressive you know what i mean like it's been a peaceful conversation we're trying to just talk to people I filmed the whole thing live. If you want to look at it, there's evidence up there. There's no there's no threat of a physical confrontation that came over here and instigated this with people who are trying to talk. Like that's pretty much it. I mean, so I mean, I give you the information to go. It's archived right now. It's on the you can look at it.
That's he called them. He after that happened and people tried to break out. That's why people are trying to break apart. They're like he called them the nigga. You know what I mean? We are trying to have a productive conversation about white supremacy and tackling capitalism, et cetera, et cetera. It was very productive. It's been over four hours that I've been telling you. What he ain't he said that it's bullshit and he shouldn't be calling nobody your name. Like I don't he not he not reaching for his gun. Well, right on, you got my but anyways. I'm trying to explain to y'all, like, it was peaceful here, and you know you having conversations. We just came up here, we don't, we don't know what's going right. on. What you mean? We somewhere, we somewhere else. Right. Well, it was a peaceful conversation. Tensions got heightened because somebody tried to remove the flag. <laughs> So they went over there to try to maintain the integrity OG? of the position of the flag. They want that in. See, been came back. They, they, they come in. They're the instigating. They, they are definitely. That's what I'm saying. They're instigating with the crowd, sir. Are you, are you, that, though, that gentleman right here in the plaid looking like Clark Kent. He walked up very aggressive. He referred to people as niggers. And somebody isolate individually okay. from him went over to tamper with the flag and that started to have tempers rise okay. so he he's he's an element right now right. you know because i've been filming this whole time like no this is live and it's archived check out the light uh, i can't i'm sorry i'm filming live right now it's like 300 people watching like i I can give you the information to look at it though. That's I'm more than happy to work with you to look at that. No, I'm separate. I'm Bella Aiko, but we all do the same type type thing. We gonna shut the shit down. We gonna shut the shit down. We gonna shut the shit down. We shut 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 shit down. We don't give a fuck shit. We gonna shut the shit down. We don't shut the shit down. We don't shut the shit down. We don't shut the shit down. We shut shit down. We shut shit down. We shut shit down. We gon' shut the 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 shit down. We shut shit down. The people who are watching my stream are saying, Bella, if you remember when he first walked up, he asked to not be on camera, probably because this was a planned, orchestrated event to instigate the crowd. Things have been very peaceful all night. The productive conversation that happens here is amazing. Um, I'm like, you know, my grand I had two grandfathers who were in the military, both of them with honorable discharges. Like I definitely understand that the military version of respect for the flag, but I also understand that if you have it re inverted, that it means citizens in distress. I happen to feel like that is a very relevant um, image for a black community who is coming out discussing the fact that black men are being unjustly murdered. The judge, jury, and executioner portion, uh, excuse me, role that a lot of the uh, police officers tend to play in the black community is plaguing the black community. If we truly do have a system of justice, then arrest the criminals and allow them to go to a jury of their peers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so, I mean, I can't be mad at them. Also, the Supreme Court said that this was a perfectly acceptable form of free speech. The inverted flag, the burning of the flag, there's a very controversial issue. Um, but when you're dealing with these subjects, when you're talking about racism and capitalism and systemic uh, oppression, et cetera, then you're going to have these types of um, scenarios. Can anyone tell me why uh, they have us surrounded and uh, they didn't try to go after the guy who they walked past who just tried to steal my flag? Like, he bought that. That's his flag. He's serious about that. He's like, this They have my me flag. surrounded, but they walk past the guy who tried to steal my shit. I got another half hour before I need to shut down an archive, so I'm going to go ahead and take that right now. It doesn't seem like the camera needs to be shut down even for a second. So now the staple on the flag has been broken, and that was by, um, I guess it's an SLU student who is not in agreement with the protest. Now the flag will be touching the ground again. There are going to be several issues with SLU students about the flag touching the ground, but the protesters have tried to respect that by putting it up on a bigger pole. 
Um, and now this issue has once again come to pass. So, uh, you know, all I can say about this situation is they need bodies. They're under constant attack by various uh, organizations on campus and individual students who do not agree with their message. And um, even when they try to even when they tried to be here peacefully and have engaging conversations to increase uh, communication and awareness, they run into this type of thing that will instigate um, the passions and the tension in the crowd. So, okay, by popular demand, I'm. Thank you for the love. We want freedom, freedom. All these ladies that have We don't need a leader. Get that, get that. We want freedom, freedom. All these ladies that have We don't need a leader. Get that, get that. We want freedom, freedom. All these ladies that have We don't need a leader. Get that, get that. All right, y'all, I'm going to shut down for a couple seconds and bring the stream back up just so I can archive the video before it hits the two-hour mark. Um, can you guys let me know when the chat lag catches up so I can shut down without doing it prematurely? Who do you serve? Who do you protect? 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 Who do you protect? Who do you serve? 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 Who do you protect